Good afternoon. Today's presentation, Sun Energy Drain Update. On October 19th, 2016, the sun went dark once again. A physicist's thoughts. Let's begin. On October 19th, 2016, the sun once again stopped emitting light in all wavelengths detected by the SDO satellite, that is the Solar Dynamics Observatory. However, the images were manipulated and cut off. So the careful examination of the images is actually necessary in order to see that indeed the sun progressively loses its light emission over a period of time and then it actually goes completely dark. The sun initially reappears 43 minutes later for the x-ray and all the other ultraviolet wavelengths and then loses the light emission another three times. Visible light emission loss, however, seems to happen in one long period of time. And it is in this fact that led us to the realization that the sun did not just go dark once, but four times at all wavelengths. Figure one below shows images of the sun in the 13.1 nanometer ultraviolet wavelength. At 1619, 1719, and 1720, October 19th, 2016. Now, the images at 1719 and 1720 are actually cut off at a certain level. This suggests, right, that possibly an attempt to hide the fact that the surface of the sun was going dark was made. Another option was that, well, instead the cutoff was used to hide an object in the blocked part of the image. The image cutoff point is indicated by red arrows below. Now looking at the left and the right hand sides of the 1719 and 1720 images, just above the cutoff line, we can actually see an uneven edge and the dark areas underneath that edge are indicated by yellow arrows. These dark areas don't appear in the 1619 image where the whole surface of the sun was still visible, suggesting that the appearance of these dark areas was a recent event. Also notice that the darkened regions on both sides move upward between the 1719 and 1720 images, indicating that the sun's surface gets progressively darker between 1719 and 1720. All of these are in universal coordinated time, UTC. Figure one again. Images of the sun as provided by the SDO satellite and viewed at helioviewer.org. And the 13.1 nanometer ultraviolet wavelength at 1619, 1719, and 1720 UTC. The image is cut off at a certain point indicated by red arrows, but the sun's surface also gets progressively darker between 1719 and 1720, is indicated by the dark area on the right and left-hand sides above the cutoff line, indicated by the yellow arrows. Figure two above showed images of the sun in the 13.1 nanometer ultraviolet wavelength between 1701 and 1809. The second image from the left in the top row in figure two from 1702 is the first image where the cutoff line is obvious. In this image, it's not clear that the surface of the sun has actually started to go dark in the 13.1 nanometer wavelength, but in the next image from 1708, an uneven edge on the left and right hand sides with the dark area underneath is actually clearly apparent, indicating that the sun is losing light emission. Okay, the next few images show the same uneven edge and dark areas advancing upwards along the surface of the sun, even as the cutoff line also advances upwards. So until the sun goes completely dark at 1725, the sun appears to completely lose the 13.1 nanometer wavelength light emission from 1725 until 1808, a period of actually 43 minutes. The second last image in figure two is the image from 1808 where the sun reappears in the 13.1 nanometer wavelength after going completely dark. Notice that the image is actually out of focus. This can be due to the fact that the camera or the SDO satellite is shaking or that the sun itself is shaking or moving in an unexpected way with respect to SDO's detectors. 
Figure 2. Images of the sun is provided by the SDO satellite and the 13.1 nanometer ultraviolet wavelength. At 1701, 2, 8, 10, 13, 15, 22, 24, 25, 1808, and 1809. Uh, excuse me, 1809. The sun goes completely dark at 1725 and only reappears at 1808, at which time the image is actually out of focus. Figure 3 shows the sun in the 9.4 nanometer x-ray wavelength at 1718 and 1719 UTC on October 19th, 2016. Now when the sun goes dark in the x-ray wavelength, the grid pattern is usually still visible. So that the time that the image does not go completely dark. Okay. Now in figure 4, an image of the sun in the 9.4 nanometer x-ray wavelength at 619 UTC on September 3rd, 2016 is shown side by side with an image from exactly the same time in the 19.3 nanometer ultraviolet wavelength. Now the sun is completely dark on the right hand side in the 19.3 nanometer image on the right of figure 4, but the x-ray image on the left still shows a grid pattern, but there's no x-ray emission. However, in figure three, the image below, the cutoff line is completely dark where there's no grid pattern. This indicates that the images have actually been manipulated and cut off and actually what's called a cutoff has been introduced. Figure three, right here. Images of the sun as provided by the SDO satellite in the 9.4 nanometer x-ray wavelength at 1718 and 19 on October 19th, 2016. Figure 4, images of the sun as provided by the SDO satellite at 619 UTC on September 3rd, 2016 in the 9.4 nanometer x-ray on the left and the 19.3 nanometer ultraviolet on the right. In the left image, a grid pattern is still visible even where there's no x-ray emission. Figure 5, Images of the sun is provided by the SDO satellite in the 9.4 nanometer X-ray wavelength at 1656 and 1701 on October 19th, 2016. A coronal hole, as reported by Steve Olson on WSO Part 1 and 2, at the very bottom of the sun is apparent in the 1701 image that is not apparent at the 1656 image. And in Figure 5, we see that a coronal hole at the very bottom of the image at 1701 is much more apparent than in the 1656. Now the, the actual appearance or dramatic darkening of this area may be the first sign that the sun's light emission was actually being affected. Notice as well in figure five that the sun cutoff line is visible in the 1701 image, but it is below the sun and so it's not yet covering any of the sun's surface. This suggests that the purpose of the, of the actual cutoff is to hide an object that would have been seen below the sun rather than to hide the fact that the sun's going dark. In order for such an object to be visible when, the star, when our sun goes dark, it has to be an object that gives off its own light and must therefore be a star. Figure six images is provided by the SDO satellite. Pay attention to this here. In the 160 nanometer ultra, uh, excuse me, ultraviolet wavelength, 1701, 2, 4, 6, 7, 11, 12, 16, 17, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 1808, and 1809 on October 19th, 2016. Now the sun goes progressively darker until 1724. And then it completely goes dark between 1725 and 1807. Now figure six shows images of the sun as provided by the SDO satellite in the 160 nanometer ultraviolet wavelength. Again, between 1701 and 1809 UTC. We're going to look at that momentarily. And in the last two images of the second last row, okay, images that are actually from 1722 and 1723 and in the first image which is of 1724 of the last row we see that they could actually be an object behind the sun that's emitting light in the 160 nanometer wavelength or a plasma discharge emerging from the top of the sun it is very clearly visible here figure seven 
Images is provided by the SDO satellite in the 170 nanometer ultraviolet wavelength. At 1701, 2, 4, 6, 7, 11, 12, 16, 17, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 1808, and 1809 on October 19, 2016. The sun goes progressively darker until 1724 and actually stays completely dark between 1725 and 1807. In figure 7, we again see an object or a plasma discharge in the images from 1721, 1722, 23, and 24. The object or plasma discharge seems larger and better defined than in the 160 nanometer wavelength images in figure, uh, figure 6. Here the anomaly looks more like a solid object emerging from behind and above the sun. Figure 8. An image of the sun is provided by the SDO satellite in the 450 nanometer uh, visible light wavelength at 1729, 1730, 2030, and 2130 on October 19, 2016. Figure 8 actually shows images of the sun in the 450 nanometer of visible light wave, uh, wavelength. The visible light images are only updated every hour on the half hour. So the sun is dark by the time the image is updated at 1730 and it doesn't reappear until 2030. Or at the period of actually three hours. Also at the time that the sun reappears in the visible light spectrum, it's clear that the visible light emission has not yet been fully restored. Only when the image is again updated at 2130, we are able to see that the sun has actually fully resumed its normal light emission. As the full circle of the sun is now visible, so that the sun actually loses visible light emission for about three hours, this suggests that perhaps the sun goes dark more than once in the other wavelengths, and indeed a search through the observation provided by the SDO satellite reveals that the sun actually goes dark for a total of four times between 1701, 2248 on October 19th, 2016. Figure 9, images of the sun, as provided by the SDO satellite in the 13.1 nanometer ultraviolet wavelength between 1814 and 1922 on October 19, 2016, the sun goes completely dark at 1839 and resumes light emission at 1921. In the second light emission loss, the sun goes dark from the top. Figure 9 shows the progressive loss of the light emission. In the 13.1 nanometer wavelength, the sun actually starts losing light emission at 1815 and goes completely dark at 1839 and suddenly reappears at 1921. So the sun stops emitting light for 42 minutes. The third light emission loss occurs between 1939 and 2035. This time the sun loses its light emission from the left as shown in figure 10 below. The sun goes completely dark at 1954 and reappears at 2034. So the sun is completely dark for 40 minutes. Also, when the sun reappears at 2034, it actually seems to be out of focus. And the horizontal line suggests that it's moving horizontally. The sun is moving. Also, two overlapping outlines of the sun are visible in the image. So in fact, it looks like the sun suddenly sprang between two positions. Figure 10. Images of the sun is provided by SDO and then 13.1 nanometer wavelength at 1929, 30, 32, 38, 43, 1948, 53, 54, 20, 34, and 2035. The sun completely loses light emission at 1954 and reappears at 2034. The sun goes dark. One more and final time this time from the right. But at 2039, the cutoff line was already visible to the right of the sun. It was probably there to hide the fact that there is an object that was about to move across the surface of the sun from right to left. This object is most likely a star that has a heavy draining effect on the sun. It is probably at a lower potential than the sun, and it so draws the sun's surface charge. This has the effect of stopping ionization and therefore light emitted as a result of the ionization. But also the temperature above the sun's surface would decrease, which would actually result in the suspension of fusion reactions as well. 
so that all the light emitted from the sun's surface would actually stop. A star with a lower electrical potential than the sun is likely to be a low mass star or a brown dwarf star. If it is a brown dwarf star, the, the actual ionized iron clouds emitted by such stars also have the effect of decreasing or even stopping fusion reactions in the sun's atmosphere. Figure 11 below shows the progression of the sun's final loss of light emission October 19, 2016 and the 13.1 nanometer wavelength. The loss, however, happens over all of the wavelengths detected by the SDO satellite. The sun goes completely dark at 2104 and reappears at 2147, so it stops emitting light across its entire surface for 43 minutes. Notice that the image from when the sun reappears after regaining its light emission has almost horizontal lines suggesting that the sun is moving almost horizontally. Also, we again see two overlapping outlines of the sun suggesting that the sun is springing horizontally between two positions. Figure 11, images of their sun, as provided by the SDO satellite in the 13.1 nanometer ultraviolet wavelength at 2039, 42, 47, 52, 59, 2104, 2147, and 2148, the sun loses light emission completely at 2104 and resumes light emission at 2147, when it again reappears to be moving almost horizontally. Figure 12 below is stunning. Pay attention. It shows the sun in 1808 on October 19, 2016, and all the wavelengths detected by the SDO satellite. This is the time that the sun reappeared after its first loss of light emission. And the first light emission loss of the day, the sun lost its emission from the bottom. All of the images except perhaps the 33.5 nanometer wavelength image suggest that the sun was either moving vertically upwards and slightly to the left. What? Or vertically downwards and slightly to the right, i.e. in the same or in the exact opposite direction in which the light emission has loss occurs. Now in the second light emission loss, the sun also appeared to be moving vertically and slightly to the side, as can be seen in figure nine below. Excuse me, figure nine above. But when we put this discovery again with the fact that the sun seems to be moving horizontally at the time it reappears after a loss of light emission that ran horizontally across the sun, see figures 10 and 11, we, we realize that the object actually causing the sun to go dark is also causing the sun to move in an unexpected way. This suggests that it is a very large object indeed. Figure 12. Images of the sun as provided by the SDO satellite in the 9.4, 13.1, 17.1, 19.3, 21.1, 30.4, 33.5, 160 and 170 nm wavelengths at 1808 on October 19th, 2016. The evidence is very clear. In conclusion, the sun has once again lost its ability to emit light on October 19th, 2016, suggesting that some object came within close proximity of the sun and drained it of its surface charge. This is probably a similar process to what has been happening in the 184 day cycle where the sun darkening cycle, which we have written about previously is occurring. However, our sun didn't go dark in the days before October 19, 2016 or in the days after. Instead, it went dark four times from four different directions. On October 19th, suggesting that the object made four passes close to the sun's surface. And since the sun went dark for about 40 to 43 minutes on each pass, it's likely that the object stayed close enough to the sun's surface in order to neutralize its surface charge for at least 40 minutes during each pass. Since this darkening event was quite different than that that was observed during the 184 day period darkening cycle, the object passing close to our sun's surface and causing the darkening event of October 19, 2016 cannot be the same object as the one that causes the 184 day period darkening cycle. We do know that the objects involved in the darkening cycle are the brown dwarf and the planet Nibiru. The brown dwarf that is parked in front of the baffle and Sechi images may still be involved in the darkening cycle as it has filled the solar system with ionized iron, 
which weakens the sun and continually drains it of its energy. However, it is not likely that planet Nibiru was the object that passed close to the surface of the sun, as this planet has an approximate 184 day cycle too, and it's not time yet for it to return. Yet. This suggests that a star, probably another brown dwarf star, thinking about uh, the red and blue Kachina twin brown dwarf stars, passed close to the sun and was attracted enough to the sun that it made four sweeps close to the surface, completely draining its surface charge each time. The fact that the sun seems to spring between two positions as its surface charge and light emission returned may be due to the object releasing the sun from its attractive influence, kind of like a magnet. The Starking event on October 19, 2016 also suggests that there may be more objects than previously thought that are able to drain the sun of surface charge and causing it to stop emitting light in all wavelengths. Take care, October 27, 2016, a physicist's thoughts. Have a great day. Good afternoon. Today's presentation, Sun Energy Drain. Update, on October 19th, 2016, the sun went dark once again, a physicist's thoughts. Let's begin. On October 19th, 2016, the sun once again stopped emitting light in all wavelengths detected by the SDO satellite, that is the Solar Dynamics Observatory. However, the images were manipulated and cut off. So the careful examination of the images is actually necessary in order to see that indeed the sun progressively loses its light emission over a period of time and then it actually goes completely dark. The sun initially reappears 43 minutes later for the x-ray and all the other ultraviolet wavelengths and then loses the light emission another three times. Visible light emission loss, however, seems to happen in one long period of time. And it is in this fact that led us to the realization that the sun did not just go dark once, but four times at all wavelengths. Figure one below being in an unexpected way with respect to SDO's detectors. Figure two, images of the sun is provided by the SDO satellite and the 13.1 nanometer ultraviolet wavelength. At 1701, 2, 8, 10, 13, 15, 22, 24, 25, 1808, and 1809. Uh, excuse me, 1809. The sun goes completely dark at 1725 and only reappears at 1808, at which time the image is actually out of focus. Figure 3 shows the sun and the 9.4 nanometer x-ray wavelength at 1718 and 1719 UTC on October 19th, 2016. Now when the sun goes dark in the x-ray wavelength, the grid pattern is usually still visible. So that the time that the image does not go completely dark. Okay. Now in figure 4, an image of the sun and the 9.4 nanometer x-ray wavelength at 619 UTC on September 3rd, 2016 is shown side by side, with an image from exactly the same time in the 19.3 nanometer ultraviolet wave shows images of the sun in the 13.1 nanometer ultraviolet wavelength at 1619, 1719, and 1720, October 19, 2016. Now the images at 1719 and 1720 are actually cut off at a certain level. This suggests right that possibly an attempt to hide the fact that the surface of the sun was going dark was made another option was that well instead the cutoff was used to hide an object in the blocked part of the image the image cutoff point is indicated by red arrows below now looking at the left and the right hand sides of the 1719 and 1720 images just above the cutoff line, we can actually see an uneven edge, and the dark areas underneath that edge are indicated by yellow arrows. These dark areas don't appear in the 1619 image, where the whole surface of the sun was still visible, suggesting that the appearance of these dark areas was a recent event. Also notice that the darkened regions on both sides, figure two from 1702, 
is the first image where the cutoff line is obvious. In this image, it's not clear that the surface of the sun has actually started to go dark in the 13.1 nanometer wavelength, but in the next image from 1708, an uneven edge on the left and right hand sides with the dark area underneath is actually clearly apparent, indicating that the sun is losing light emission. Okay, the next few images show the same uneven edge and dark areas advancing upwards along the surface of the sun, even as the cutoff line also advances upwards. So until the sun goes completely dark at 1725, the sun appears to completely lose the 13.1 nanometer wavelength light emission from 1725 until 1808, a period of actually 43 minutes. The second last image in figure two is the image from 1808 where the sun reappears in the 13.1 nanometer wavelength after going completely dark. Notice that the image is actually out of focus. This can be due to the fact that the camera or the SDO satellite is shaking or that the sun itself is shaking or move, move upward between the 1719 and 1720 images indicating that the sun's surface gets progressively darker between 1719 and 1720. All of these are in universal coordinated time UTC. Figure one again. Images of the sun as provided by the SDO satellite and viewed at helioviewer.org in the 13.1 nanometer ultraviolet wavelength at 1619, 1719, and 1720 UTC. The image is cut off at a certain point indicated by red arrows, but the sun's surface also gets progressively darker between 1719 and 1720. It's indicated by the dark area on the right and left hand sides above the cutoff line indicated by the yellow arrows. Figure two above showed images of the sun in the 13.1 nanometer ultraviolet wavelength between 1701 and 1809. The second image from the left in the top row 